Hey y'all, welcome to my channel or welcome back. If you are new here, thank you so much for joining us. If you are returning, you already know it. You are fabulous. All right, so today's video, this is a nautical DIYs video. These turn out fantastic. I absolutely love these. Seriously, y'all, these are my favorite of any of the nautical that I have done yet to date. So I hope that y'all enjoy these and let's jump right in. All right, y'all. So for this first one, I have got nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. This is the thinner of the nautical rope. I have got a mirror from the Dollar Tree and I've also got a placemat that I picked up at the Dollar General store and I think it was two or three dollars. Less than three. I think it was actually two dollars. Y'all, I tried forever to get this mirror apart. Well, I decided there was no way that was going to happen without me breaking it. So, that was out of the question. I just taped this dude up. Literally put my painter's tape right across it, took my little spatula from the Dollar Tree, pressed it around the edges, and then cut it out with my X-Acto knife, making a perfect circle. Super simple and very, very quick. Now, I'm going to take plaster chalk paint along with antique wax, both by Waverly, and we're going to paint this sunburst. Starburst, sunburst, uh, sunflower, whatever you want to call it. We're going to paint this up with that plaster chalk paint first. Now, I did that as opposed to maybe, say, spray painting it because that would have been easier because it had a lot of little, you know, like creases and crevices and edges and, you know, it just, it had a lot to it. It would have been easier to do with spray paint, but you're not going to get the same adherence with the antique wax. You know what I'm saying? So, I just felt that it was better to do the, the chalk paint first. Now, uh, after that had dried, completely dried, I go in with the antique wax with a very heavy hand and a stencil brush. That way, I could make sure I could get down in every one of those little creases, y'all. I wanted this antique wax down in every little nook and cranny that I could get it in, okay? And you're going to see why here in just a second right now. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. It just pops, y'all. Ah. Uh, I love this mirror. How do y'all say it? Mira? Mirror? Mira? Mirror. I don't know. I'm Southern, so I just say mirror. But sure don't ask me how to spell that. <laughs> okay, now, once I got the, the mirror, like I wanted it, I got the uh, antique wax on there just like I wanted it. I've taken the baby wipe and gone back and wiped at it just as much as I wanted to. I did take my brush that had the plaster on it, and I, I kind of hit at it just a little bit. I mean, just barely a little bit, okay? Now, I'm going to flip it over, take some Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree, tumbling tower blocks, whatever you want to call them, and we're going to glue those hot glue to the bottom of this mirror because it, okay, the points around it, each one of those sits higher than the center of this. So, what I'm trying to say is it just doesn't sit flat. It's not flush, okay? So, I put those tumbling tower blocks in there. That way, I would have something to glue to. That way, it would glue to the placemat. Because, since as it's a placemat made of, you know, basket weave or whatever it is, it's not a lot, it's not ideal uh, to glue to is what I'm trying to say. So, I knew that I was going to need an, a lot of hot glue and a lot of space to glue to. So, that's why we added in the tumbling tower blocks. Flip it over, add it to the center of the placemat. Y'all, I'm so in love with this. Oh, I'm so in love with this. My daughter's already claimed it. First off, as soon as she got home from school and seen it, she was on that. That's going in my bedroom. We're we're leaning more towards like a boho-ish, you know, type, you know, young girl, um, young woman, excuse me. She's she's 15 now. She is a young lady. Um, but that kind of style for her bedroom, her new bedroom in the new house. So this mirror she wanted, but I then decided to take some um of that nautical rope and go around the, the center of this. 
And I just cut it off like flush with the other end, added a little bit of hot glue, and then tucked it in there real nice and neatly. That way, you, you know, you couldn't really tell where it started and stopped. I even trimmed off, you know, any little excess pieces of it or anything. I wanted, I didn't really want you to be able to tell where I had started my glue at. I decided to add another round of this all the way around. And listen, guys, I do apologize during this video. You're going to see a lot of the top of my head, like for instance, now I am in a cabin trying to film and live with uh, three other people and four dogs. So there's not a lot of space is what I'm trying to say here. And I was trying a different angle with the camera. So that's what's going on with that through this video. I didn't realize it. And I didn't realize that my camera was like clicking on and off for like evening and daytime. It, it has like a setting on it that changes the colors. So some of this will be bright, nice, nice and bright and pretty. And then some of it will be kind of dark looking for some reason. But that's just the way that it ended up doing. Anyways, once I got my two rows of nautical rope on this, I decided to take a little bit more of that nautical rope, tuck it down in the actual basket weave part of the placemat. Like I took that spatula and just made myself a little opening and then to, used it to push that nautical rope through it. Pulled the back of that rope up. Now, this is going to be kind of hard to explain, but surely to goodness y'all can see what I'm doing. I just pulled the pieces up, and then I'm going to take one strand of some of that nautical rope, and we're going to twist that around the, like, we're making more or less like handles, kind of, that would be on each side. And we're just going to twist that around. I added a little bit of hot glue to start it out, just secure it in place. And then I'm just going to twist that around it several times. This turns out so, so stinking cute, y'all. Oh my goodness. It's darling. It truly is. I just secured that off with a little bit more hot glue. And then I'm going to snip that off. Super duper simple. And then I'm just going to fringe it out at the top. Now, I had to twist it a little bit just to get it to kind of turn the way I wanted it. But then you, once you fringe it out, it's so cute, y'all. Oh, it was like the best finishing touches to this piece. Now, how I come up with that, I have no idea. It, this was one of those roll with the punches, okay? Now, I knew that I wanted to paint it with the, with the plaster and the... Uh, the antique wax, and I knew that I obviously wanted to glue it to the placemat, but I had no idea about the nautical rope. That was just an extra last minute throw in kind of thing. So this was one of those roll with it, you know, kind of kind of crafts, and it really, really turned out darling. So I just did the same exact thing to the other side, snip it off, and then just kind of fringe out the top. And this is ready. Y'all check it out. So for this next one, I have got two of these wood circle cutouts. Now these came off of um, candles. They were like the lid to a set of candles that I had. I have got the starfish from the Dollar Tree. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just remove that little lip that's around there. It's just a little plastic like gasket, I guess, for the lid of that candle. And then I'm going to start gluing my starfish to the wood circle. Y'all, this was so, so easy to do. And these are so 
pretty when it's done. So I just added a very small amount of hot glue to the tip of each of these. Now, if I had this to do over, I would use a different glue. These did not hold up. I'm going to be 100% honest with y'all. After, like, after I got the, by the time I got the pictures and the video taken of these in the end, they had started to fall apart. So if I do put these back together, I will definitely be using E6000 or something like that. But for, you know, video purposes, I just went ahead and, and used hot glue to make these. These were, so, like I said, so, so stinking simple to make and they turn out so pretty. So I just add my little starfish all the way around on that little lip. That's where I'm adding it. I hope that you could see that. Now, I, I started out with some uh, tumbling tower blocks, and then I decided to take some beads instead, some wood beads. And I'm just going to add some hot glue. And I got completely out of frame here, and I do apologize. But all I'm doing is had, adding hot glue to the bottom of those wood beads and then adding those to the bottom of these candle holders, y'all. I popped in a couple candles, and these are gorgeous. So for this third DIY, I have got three of these um, Dollar Tree fish, and then I've got one of the netting things that they have. I've also got a canvas that I picked up at Five Below. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is take a box cutter and cut off the canvas. Super simple. I just cut really close to the, the staples and then just peel it right off. Super, super simple. Now, you can go through and take out all of the staples. I was able to remove a few, but I wasn't going to fight it. It's just too much work, and I, we're going to be covering it completely up anyway, so I didn't see the point in it. So, I just left the staples. I'm going to flip it over. Now, as you can see there, it, it just started falling apart immediately. So, I was like, okay, great. Now, we're going to have to work on this. But anyways, I just took some wood glue that I picked up at the Dollar Tree, put it in each corner, and then pressed all of the sides of my frame back together. So super simple. Took a baby wipe and wiped off any excess. You want to really get that glue off because if you stain it, like which what we're about to do with the antique wax, the, the um, wax will not go through the glue. So you want to make sure and wipe off any excess with a baby wipe. So I stained it with the antique wax. I then take another baby wipe, wipe off the antique wax, any excess. Now, while it was still wet, I'm going to take plaster chalk paint by Waverly and just kind of paint it on and kind of smear it in is what we're more or less doing because I took a baby wipe while everything was still wet and smeared it all together. And this is going to be a really weathered, beachy looking wood now. Check it out. I love it. This worked out perfectly. Now, I did take, once that dried, I did take uh, my brush that had the plaster on it, and I kind of dry brushed at it, but very, very lightly dry brushed. Just enough that where any of the like raised parts of the frame would catch my, my brush, and then there would be a little bit of white paint, but very, very lightly. Now, I'm going to go through and cut off all of the hangers on my fish. I'm then going to take my sanding sponge, and I'm just going to sand these down really well. Get a baby wipe, wipe them back off really, really well. Look how good that they sanded down, y'all. It completely changed the color of them when you sand them down. Completely changes these. They look way more uh, farmhouse. Okay, so I picked up this new stapler slash brad nailer. This is an electric 
Tacker. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce the actual brand of this, but I bought this on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description box for this, y'all. It was so easy to use. I never, ever put my own staples in even a regular staple gun. So, for me to be able to read the instructions and actually load this thing by myself was a major accomplishment. So, just to say the least, it is very easy to use. Now, I took that frame, flipped it over, and laid my netting across, you know, just over the top of it on one corner of the netting. I then took this staple gun and stapled the netting to the actual frame. Yeah, I kind of stapled it in some funny spots. Getting used to the staple gun. But one thing about this staple gun that I will say that I absolutely loved was it was so easy to pull the trigger, y'all. So easy. No harder than pulling the trigger on your glue gun. Like, it was super easy, y'all. Seriously. Absolutely love, love this new electric stapler. Now, I took some more of that netting and placed it across it. Just kind of catty corner to the first piece that I had laid on there so that it would look like there was a really a lot of netting. I do apologize again for my head getting in the way, y'all. I will know next time to not record this direction. I should have been checking it all along, but I was really into these DIYs and I was just getting it done this day. You know what I mean? So anyway, so once I had it all stapled on like I wanted it, I did go around and cut off all the excess netting and then I had a few places where I needed to re-staple just to pull it super taut. But I just went around each little spot and stapled each little piece of the netting. I then pulled the canvas over the top of the frame, over the top of the netting, and stapled that to the frame. So this is over the top of the netting. And I've actually got it where the back of the canvas is facing frontwards, if that makes sense. Now you can see. So what you're looking at is the back of the canvas. I wanted that actual uh, texture material. So anyways, I cut off all the excess with my box cutter. Super simple. How cool does this look, y'all? Seriously, this thing is awesome. You could use this kind of background for so many different DIYs that come up nautical. Like, you could really go crazy with this. Anyways, I took my fish and I place them one facing different from the other. I then began to glue them down with my hot glue. Totally messed up and glued them going the same direction. Oh my gosh, picked it up, turned it around as fast as I possibly could. Got so lucky because there was very little glue that I had to scrape off and I was actually able to get off what excess had actually come up with my fingernail. So no big deal, false alarm. I totally panicked, though, as soon as I set that dude down, y'all. I thought I had ruined it. Uh, and then I almost did it again. Can you believe that? Listen, sometimes my brain is just not part of what's going on. <laughs> I swear. Check this out, though. Is this not gorgeous? So before we start this next one, I did want to mention, if you hear it raining, I do apologize, but I'm sitting in my car doing my voiceover so that y'all could actually hear me. So anyways, I have got a board and also some of the um, starfish from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using this folk art chalk paint in the color uh, Cascade. I thought it was going to be the the right color that I wanted, but as I painted it and put the second coat on it I, and then dried it, I realized that it was just a little bit darker 
than what I was wanting. So I took some of it, put it in one of these little containers from the Dollar Tree, mixed it up with some white chalk paint by Waverly and come up with the perfect color. It was just light enough. I just needed it to be just a little bit lighter. So this worked out absolutely perfectly this was exact color that i was going for now once i had that painted i did take a sanding sponge and go over this entire board i thought it turned out really good it distressed it really well you could see the anchor it just really distressed it just right now i took some of these letter stickers from the dollar tree and i added these to my board i also used that sand dollar i believe i said starfish whenever i was uh saying this in the beginning telling you the supplies that i use but i ended up using the sand dollar for the z the uh, o in the word home super cute super easy like this was a very quick diy so so simple i then decided it needed just something just something else it was missing just a little bit so i did take some twine from the dollar tree and just twist it around the top and bottom of the board just twist it around a couple times and then tied it off in the back super simple nothing to it just did the same thing at the top twisted it around it and then tied it off very very simple now i wish i had gone back and distressed my letters but i didn't but i still think it turned out fantastic i hope that y'all like it and definitely one of my favorites i have got one of these anchors that i picked up from the dollar tree now this is like their new line of summer decor i've also got some beads that i dumped everywhere don't buy these little containers from the dollar tree they aren't worth a darn okay the lids do not snap on so <clears throat> definitely not worth your money i also have some nautical rope from the dollar tree now this is a piece of nautical rope that i had already taken one of of the uh, pieces out of it comes in like three pieces that are twisted together and I'd already taken one of them out I'm gonna be using plaster and also antique wax on this anchor so I started out with the plaster chalk paint just giving this a really one really good coat dried it with my heat gun I wanted to start out with the plaster once again so that my antique wax would have something to adhere to better so then I'm going to go in with the antique wax and a very heavy hand because I really wanted this to get down in every one of those little creases and crevices and just really really get down in every little spot that it could stay so I made sure to go through all of it with the antique wax I'm then going to take a baby wipe and wipe it right back off now it did not stay down in all of the creases like I wanted it to like it did in some of them and then some it just wiped right back off um so what I did was just really play around with this. I kept going back and forth. I would add a little bit of antique wax and then I would wipe it off and I'd add a little bit more. And then this last time I just kind of patted it so that the antique wax would still be there and it would still have that kind of aged look, but it's not covered in the antique wax, if that makes sense. Now, once that completely dried, I took what paint was left on my brush with the plaster chalk paint and once again, just like we did with the mirror, I just simply br dry brushed it to, to highlight it. And it works out perfectly. Look at how aged and just old this thing looks now. I absolutely love it, y'all. Like, I think that that painting technique is, it's 
it really works out very well. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to be taking some twine from the Dollar Tree and a little bit of masking tape, and I'm just going to twist this onto the end of my masking tape to make like a faux needle. That way, I can start to bead my twine. And I just went like five little ones, one big one. Four little ones, one big one. Five little ones, one big one. Because I only had like so many of the medium-sized beads. And then the rest of those are actually beads from a Dollar Tree uh, garland. Now, <clears throat> once I got those on there, I'm just going to take my twine, loop it through the anchor, then loop it th back through itself pull it to the back of the anchor and tie it in a triple knot. Now, the reason that I went ahead and did a triple knot instead of just a double is because this twine from the Dollar Tree is super duper thin. So, I just wanted to make sure that it was really good and secure. And if you pull too hard on this twine, you can actually bust it. So, be really careful with it. That The twine from the Dollar Tree, I can't say is the best twine ever, but it's good twine when you're using beads because it's super Super thin. Now, to make our um, tassel for the other end, I'm going to take this, this nautical rope and I'm just going to undo it until I only have one ply of the nautical rope. I only need one piece out of that. So, I just untwisted it. Then I'm going to take it and twist it around this pack of baby wipes in order to create my loops. Now, we've got our loops. I'm going to pull that over to the side take the twine that is connected to our beads and I'm going to pull that through our loops. Super simple. Pull it all the way up to the edge of the beads and then tie it in a triple knot. Once again, just tying it off in a triple knot. And now that way our tassel is connected to the end of the beads. Super simple, guys. Super, super simple. I hope I did that slow enough. I usually go through it pretty fast making a tassel, but I just wanted to make sure that y'all were seeing this kind of slow using the nautical rope because I just think it turns out to be the prettiest dang tassel. It's so big and bulky and it's just, oh, I just love it. So I took another piece of twine, wrapped it around the top of those loops and tied it off and then just snipped off the twine. Super simple. Now, the twine that is still connected, I'm going to wrap around that loop so that it's kind of thick and you really see that uh, the different colors of the twine. And you're really going to see that at the top of this, creating that tassel. I just think it looked good. So I'm just going to tie that off. Once again, tie it in a triple knot. I busted it. See there, I told y'all, you can bust it, so be careful. But anyways, it, it was okay. It was still knotted up, so it was okay. I just snipped it off, and then I'm going to go through and cut my loops. Some of these I was able to cut together. Some of them I just had to go through and individually cut. But you just want to pull it all the way out and then cut at the end. But look at that. I almost left it like that. And then I was like, nope. I've got to brush it out because I just love the way that this looks. It's so big and bulky, y'all. Look at that. I love it. Guys, I just trimmed it off at the bottom just so it would be straight across. This was so easy to make. Oh, my goodness. So, so easy to make. Just trimmed it off. Made sure I got off any little excess pieces. Made sure it was super straight across the bottom. And I absolutely love this. You're going to have to let me know what you think in the comments about this one. Because I just love it. Ah.
right, y'all. That is it for today. I hope that y'all have enjoyed these. I know that I definitely had a blast making these. I always enjoy doing the nautical theme. And like I said at the beginning of this video, these are my favorite nautical DIYs I have done yet to date. So I do hope that y'all have enjoyed these. If you did, please give them a thumbs up. It definitely helps my channel. Don't forget to share these with your friends and family and subscribe. That would be awesome. Plus hit that notification bell so that you will know each time I upload a new video. I just want to say thank you one more time. You have no idea how much I appreciate each and every one of you. Seriously, I do. If you've missed any of the daily devotionals, there is a playlist in the description box. And y'all have a blessed day. Mm -hmm.